How's it going everybody? Austin Carter here with the Tech Line Leather. Welcome to part two of our Tooling Tuesday videos where I am going to be painting, dyeing, antiquing, and finishing our traditional tattoo style artwork. Here I'm using some Master's Touch acrylic paint. I just picked this uh, these tubes up from Hobby Lobby. They're fairly inexpensive. And I always generally water them down a bit because um, if you don't, they're a little bit, uh, just a little bit too thick. And you see I use a Q-tip there. Make sure you save those for, for later or the other end at least. All right, and so I'm going to begin painting up this skull. And I'm going to be, this is going to be the first of two coats. And the reason I do that is I like to build up the layers of my paint so that I avoid any possibility of uh, paint wipe off when I'm applying all my other, uh, like the, the tan coat and the um, antique paste. And so it really allows the paint to soak up into the leather and really adhere. Um, and then I make sure that before I move on to any steps that um, the paint is completely dry. Right now this first coat's just applied pretty liberally. I'm trying to get into all the little crevices. The paint brushes that I'm using, um, I, I believe they're also my master's touch. Again, this is I, just something I picked up in Hobby Lobby. They just come in packs, fairly inexpensive. All right, so I've applied the second layer of white paint, moving on to this yellow. And I apologize, but I believe my S, at this point, my SD card ran out of memory, and so I, I missed the painting of this, but just the same thing as the white. Apply two layers, mix up with water, um, so I painted that flower and the little petals on the cactus. Moving on, I'm going to hit that bandana. I'm going to use a nice red, cowboy red. Again, this paints by it's acrylic and by it's it's by Master's Touch. And again, first layer is going to apply liberally, and I find that each paints go on differently. Like yellows tend to have a, you know, difficult time laying down and, and generally I'll, I'll do two or three, sometimes maybe four layers of, of paint just because for some reason, um, not all colors lay down the same. So if, if you're just not liking how it's turning out, I would say just apply another layer until you build up and get the the look you want. All right, so I've done two layers on the bandana. <clears throat> and now I'm, I use uh, Fibings Pro dyes and uh, a lot of Fibings products, but uh, I'm gonna use a Fibings Black here for the eye sockets and nasal cavity. And what you saw me do right there is, um, if, I, if I'm just gonna use a little bit of dye, I just kinda tip the whole bottle into the cap and uh, it gives me enough dye to kinda work with for a project. We're not having to pour it out into a, another container or something like that. One uh, quick tip that I'll share is if you'll notice the location of where I have my my dyes and paint it's it's uh, in the foreground so it's behind the project that I'm working on and the reason I don't have it like right in front of me is just in case you bump it and you you avoid spills that way moving on I'm going to use some five beings saddle tan and we're going to start working on this cowboy hat and right now I'm going to hit 
just the brim of the hat. Um, and that's just trying to, um, uh, the, the hat's going to be brown. And so I wanted this lighter, uh, this lighter tan to kind of accentuate the brim, um, to show a little bit more of the light um, and the highlights of it. And what you'll notice me doing throughout the project, especially when I'm dying, is in the areas that I want darker, I'll make sure they're they're fairly dark. And then with a, a drier brush, I'll start to fade in and fade out the dye so that it, it kind of tapers off. So, all right, moving on, I'm gonna start working on the hat using a five inch dark brown. So there's that piece of Q-tip that I cut off from earlier. I'm gonna use that later. And now I'm going to lay down kind of the dark areas of the hat, the shadow areas. And so I apply a fairly heavy layer of dye there. And I want to start thinking about feathering or just lightly working the brush down into those light spots. So I don't want a hard line and so I'll dry brush it um, and kind of fade into where that, that highlight is gonna be. And you'll see I'll take a little bit of dye on that Q-tip end. And if I have too much, I wipe it off on a napkin or on my table there. And what I'm trying to do is um, I kind of use little circle motions and kind of work that in into kind of like a bleed off effect. And I'm just gonna work that all the way around the hat in the areas that um, I kind of want to fade off from, from dark to light. So continuing on with the cowboy hat, I'm going to start just hitting areas that I want a little darker. And uh, this was a pretty good um, practice piece for me. Um, I'm, I'm not a heavy, heavy leather artist or a painter or dyer or anything like that. It's, it's also something I'm kind of getting into and learning some new techniques. I know... Um, there's some techniques for kind of watering down your dye so that you can build up different layers. And um, I've been looking at a lot of Al Stolen books um, going over that. And so I, use it, I didn't use any of the techniques in this video because um, I just wanted to kind of jump into it and, and get this out to y'all. But um, if y'all want me to do more painting and dyeing, um, I'm always trying to learn and if I can share with you the things that I've found or the things that I'm working uh, towards, um, just let me know down in the comments to see if, if that'd be something you'd be interested in. Because there's, there's a myriad of aspects to leather, leather work and leather craft, and I think dyeing and painting definitely has its place, and that's just a whole another um, facet of the craft and uh, sometimes it's one of those things that I kind of overlook because um, unless I'm doing a piece that really requires it I don't I don't generally paint um, I might layer different dyes in my leather work some different browns just to get some different shades or uh, I but I heavily rely on antique and and kind of more of a I guess traditional uh, Western look and so to me that doesn't necessarily require a lot of paints and dyes. Alright so that's pretty much the hat. 
all dyed up. Again, everything's going to pop a little better when you start doing antique. We're going to move on to the leaves and the cactus. And here I'm using some Angelus acrylic paints, a green and an avocado. Um, I'm using the avocado to begin with, with the cactus and the leaves. Um, it's kind of a, it's a little lighter green. And it's also a bit more muted. Also kind of like that yellow. That yellow is not a true yellow. Um, and I, I do not remember the name of the yellow that I used, but it's, it's also, it's more of that, um, it's kind of, it's kind of muted. And I kind of like that for this traditional style, um, artwork. And so here I'm just going to paint up that cactus and, uh, paint up those leaves. And that's the, the base layer green that I'm going to go with, that avocado. As always, remember, just take your time. Um, be real cognizant of your hands. Uh, I'm constantly checking my hands while I'm painting and dying um, because accidents happen and you'll never know if you bump a paint or, um, or a dye and if you get that on your knuckles, sometimes you'll drag that across your project and all of a sudden you have a little smudge or a stain which is a bad day it's just not very fun um, the other thing you'll kind of notice me doing is that I'm working on this project from the interior to the exterior and that kind of goes hand in hand with what I previously stated about trying to keep your hands clean if you work from the inside out I find that there's less of a chance of you accidentally um, getting your hands or fingers wet by paint because I don't always let every single piece dry before I move on to the next one. And so if you work from the inside out, I find that it's a little bit safer uh, for your project. Here I am, I'm using that other green. It's a bit darker and I'm using that to kind of shadow in areas of the leaves and the cactus and I only did about one good coat of this um, I find with the acrylic paints when you start layering they adhere to to one another way better and so um, I only use one layer for that throw a little red on that hat band now I'm going back to the white to throw on some highlights and again, I'm not, I'm not a professional painter whatsoever. And so I'm sure uh, my light to shadow ratios or aspect ratios or, or whatever, <laughs> I don't even know what to call it, are off. Um, but at this point, it's kind of uh, what I think is appealing to the eye. And, and so I'm kind of hitting those, those top portions of the of the pieces with, with some white just to highlight and accentuate everything. And um, I think when it comes to painting, unless you're just a master at it and you understand how things are supposed to look, um, for me, less is more. And so I just try and uh, do a little bit here and a little bit there, but I don't try and go crazy with it. And so here I am kind of hitting more of those highlights for the hat and um, again I'm, I'm trying to do my best to follow kind of a traditional tattoo coloring scheme with this project and so um, I have a few tattoos myself they're not traditional they're they're black and gray but um, it's kind of what what I felt while I was painting this All right, so everything is dry, and now I'm going to apply tan coat, which is going to be my um, my protective layer, so that I can lay down my antique paste after this is completely dry, and so that the antique will not adhere directly to the project. It'll just get kind of caught in the, the cuts and really make everything pop. I'm using an antique 
or a, a five beams antique finish, the dark brown. And with the dauber, I'm just going to liberally kind of apply that everywhere and uh, spread it out evenly throughout the project. Again, the, the tan coat has completely dried and that's when you want to apply your, your antique paste and I make sure I get it all over there. And to wipe it off, I'm just using some of those like shop paper towels. Um, I was using normal paper or regular paper towels and they just were, uh, they're just a little too, too light for, for my taste. These shop towels are a bit more hardy. And so I really like using that to wipe off the antique. You can see that it's, it's giving this project just a whole nother feel. All right, and so when the antique is completely dry, I go back over and kind of do a, a light coat of tan coat again. And again, this is just kind of um, another part of the sealing process. This is gonna kind of lock in everything, shine everything up. Your whites are gonna be a little bit wider. The reds are gonna be a little bit wider. And so I'm gonna let that completely dry. And then this is just something that I, I do to most of my projects. I use Fibing Saddle Lac and I apply a pretty light layer on the top of my project. Make sure you spray this in a well ventilated area. My door is open with a fan going. It's pretty strong and it's extremely flammable so be very careful. And it gives it a kind of a nice sheen. This right here is it's showing pretty wet but um, it dries off and kind of thins out later. All right, y'all, so this is kind of my version of the traditional tattoo leather work um, and painting and dyeing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. If you like what I'm doing with this channel, uh, please subscribe, like, and share this video. And until next time, y'all have a great day.